Hey blokes, it's time to pay attention. It's time to pay attention to who we are as men and how we can show up better every single day. My name is Simon Rinney, and I'm inviting you to subscribe to the Mindful Men podcast. Each episode helps us to become more mindful of what's happening in our lives, from our health and well-being to work, relationships, parenting, and everything in between. You'll hopefully leave each episode inspired and thinking and feeling in new directions. The Mindful Men podcast is available on your favorite podcast platforms and YouTube. So what are you waiting for? Together, let's get mindful. Welcome to Dad Space. Glad to have you with us today. Got a guest from the other side of the world. Simon is with me today. Simon Rene is with me. And Simon is going to come on and share his story as a podcaster, as a dad. He's got lots of stuff to talk about today. He's a musician, got two great kids, and he's coming on to talk about some really important things. The Mindful Men podcast. You heard the ad just before we started. Go check out Simon's podcast. Give him a like, a follow, a share, and do all the good things. Simon's on the podcast here on Dad Space. Thanks for listening. Here's Simon. So Simon is joining us. He's going to talk a little bit about his podcast, his family, changes at work, OCD, burnout, stress. We talk a lot about a lot of different things today on the podcast. Glad to have you with us. Here it is. Here's Simon. Okay, Dad Space people, I have a guest with me, and he's on. If you're watching, obviously I'm not here by myself. That's a good thing. Simon is here. Simon, how are you? What's going on? Good, Dave. How are you? It's eight o'clock here in the morning and the kids are about to jump in the car to go to school. So I'm looking forward to some some dad time with you on, online. <laughs> Thank you for squeezing in some time with us today. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's like six o'clock p.m. where I am on Monday. Yep. So this is what, Tuesday for you? Yeah, I come from the future, so it's Tuesday morning. So, <laughs> so is there something exciting going to happen tomorrow for me, or what? Um, probably the night time. Uh, <laughs> so, so maybe some some shut eye. <laughs> Depends on how old your kids are. I mean, I'm up during the night usually with my kids. So, I love talking yeah. to people in the future. It's great. <laughs> so great. So yeah, Simon, you are a podcaster. I'm on your podcast <laughs> site right now. The Mindful Men podcast. I love it, by the way. Like Thank we were you. just joking about before we we you talk before we hit record. Those Canadian listens are some of them are me, just so you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so rate and review and do all the things. I love I love talking to podcasters. Tell me a little bit about your podcast. I'd love to know how it started and why you're doing this. Yeah. So the podcast has been going for 2022. And it was, I guess, a mechanism for me to share my story. So I've got a story of, of mental health and mental illness, and I've lived with obsessive compulsive disorder, depression and anxiety for 30 years. Um, so I wanted to share my story with the hope that it inspires other men to, to open up and, and be mindful of who they are and how they can grow. And, and if they need help to, to, to find that inspiration through me or through the podcast or through the other guests as well to get that inspiration and go see a, their doctor or a psychologist or a counsellor or even just talk to someone that they know, like a friend or a family member. Um, and, yeah, I talk about a whole range of things on, on the podcast from my mental health story to parenting. So I'm a dad of two. Um, I love talking to guests all over the world. I've talked to social workers because I am a social worker too. Um, and yeah, just hear different stories. It's really cool to connect um, through things like Zoom, like what we're doing today and, and have chats with people all over the world about different things that, that impact men. So um, yeah, tune in if you can to the Mindful Men podcast. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's really kind of surreal. Like when you get to meet other podcasters, because you're, you're in my earbuds as I'm yeah. doing my day to day. And I, <laughs> I know your voice because I can shut my eyes. I can hear you in my head because i'm listening to the podcast and then to talk to you in person it's like it's kind of weird because you're like you know that whole thing about meeting your heroes right you're my hero yeah. because you're speaking yeah. to me and you're encouraging me through the podcast and it's kind of it's it's kind of odd because i'm looking to my right on the screen and i'm 
again, I'm on your, on your podcast and then you're right there. It's really kind of cool. <laughs> so um, tell me what kind of response are you getting from your guests, from your listeners? What's encouraging yeah. you about the podcast? Uh, I think when I, whenever I do anything like a podcast or I've got the social media as well, it's not so much to do it for millions and millions of likes and follows and, and stuff like that. It's, it's more for, for me to just to share things and hope that it inspires. And if, and if one person likes it, so you're listening to it over in, in, in Canada, um, then that's, then I'm happy with that, you know? Um, so, I, but I am getting good feedback. We've got one that released today on mental health in the trades industry. Um, mm -hmm. So for carpenters, plumbers, builders, all those types of types of people, um, so there's a great episode that's come out today, but you know, it's, it's great. I'm, I had my five-year-old son on the podcast and he's probably <laughs> the, the biggest fan and, and he's keen to come back on and, and do an episode on Pokemon. So, um, I'm, I think if he's excited about it, then I'm excited about it and that's all that really matters. And then whatever else comes from there is, is, is also a bonus. So does your son understand what's happening when his voice is going out into the world? Does he, does he clue into this or is he just having fun with, just having fun with dad? He watches a lot of YouTube okay. <laughs> and he wants to be a YouTube star. So he kind of understands that it's out there and, he, and his face is on YouTube through the episode. But, um, um, but when, when we press record, he just went really shy on the episode. So he didn't <laughs> talk as much as he would normally talk. Um, and he did a lot of like nonverbal <laughs> communication. So I said, mate, if, for people to understand what you're doing, you've got to talk into the microphone. So, yeah. um, but he's keen to come back on and he's ready for a Pokemon episode. So that's what we're gearing up for. Okay. So I have to ask on behind you, I see a guitar. Is this a prop or is this a real thing? You're like, no, it's you're a like real... a guitar hero here. <laughs> no, well, that's, it's a, uh, I haven't, I don't play as much as I used to. The kids probably play on it more than I do. It does okay. need a, um, a uh, bit of a tune up and, and new strings and all that type of stuff. But I used to play a lot in, in high school oh. um, and I found it was a great uh, mechanism for reducing anxiety. So as I yeah. said before, my history of mental illness and, and I found through playing different songs and, but also singing as well. So I learned how to sing and play at the same time. I felt afterwards, I felt just better. And I'm wondering if it's the, it's probably like the breathing and, and controlled breathing when you're trying to sing and, and stuff like that um that helped reduce a lot of anxiety that i felt yeah in my high school days so um but yeah these days it collects more dust than it does get played but uh it's a reminder in the background for me to to get it out again and start playing because nice. um yeah i see you've got one in the in the back as I, well mine's hiding in the case yeah it's, yeah uh, I, I have i have dogs and they love to bump into stuff yeah so as long as if i'm not around they you put no you put away but I just don't want them to be like, eh, crash. Yeah, that wouldn't yeah. be good. So um, yeah. so I can put you on the spot. A favorite That's artist, okay. a favorite song. What what do you like? Uh, I like everything, like absolutely anything. It just depends on my mood. So when I'm going back to those those teenage angst days, it was a lot of heavy metal, Metallica and corn and all that type of stuff. But as I got older, I, I wanted to to mellow out a lot more. Um, so I used to listen to a lot of Jack Johnson. Oh. Um, I love um you know, Cat Stevens, my dad listened to a lot of Cat Stevens growing up and and I love his kind of music and just anything really. Like when I'm studying or when I'm focusing, I'll put on just piano music and just tune out that and just just zone in into what I'm doing or other days, you know, I might be listening to hip hop or R&B, just anything that's really vibing me that day will get a listen. So, Okay, so I have a suggestion for you. A musical suggestion. I have another podcast, by the way, called the Add to My Playlist podcast. And it's the whole yep. idea of the press premises. We we share songs together and introduce new artists to each other. And that's kind of the whole idea. So anyway, um, so that's another to plug. I guess I have to pay myself for that plug. But anyways, um, there's a my friend is a musician in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Yep. His name is Jacob Moon. And uh, if you go to jacobmoon.com, he's mm -hmm. an acoustic guitar player. He does live looping. So he records himself live and then plays tracks over tracks, right? And builds a song in front of you. Kind of like watching a chef make your dinner in front of you. It's yep. it's mesmerizing. So right. anybody that likes guitar, you might enjoy that. So Yeah, I do love loops and stuff. And and I did a bit of loop work. I would never wrote the music, but as, as part of my, I experienced burnout in 2020. And on the YouTube channel for, for Mindful Men, the first 50 or so videos is me on 
garage band on my computer and just putting loops together. And, and I, I called it, I think it's music for mental health. And I just wow. inspired by one day it might be anxiety or another day it might be depression or whatever. And I just got those loops together and, and it felt like I was like a little DJ, even though it's not my music, I was just putting it together. And so if anyone's keen to hear, hear that kind of, really bad <laughs> bad dj loops um yeah check out the first 50 videos on on the mindful men youtube page as well so as a dj do you wear like a large marshmallow on your head or anything no it's usually no. just the active active wear when i'm sitting at the at the dinner table <laughs> there's that guy with the big marshmallow head right i'm like what is this how do you breathe in that thing anyway so yeah. that's that's cool so we're talking all things dad and again really excited to have you here um Tell me a little bit more about your family and maybe maybe a moment that you can think of when you're like, I'm actually doing it. I'm a dad. Like I'm actually, I'm actually doing it. I'm doing it. Yeah. So we live on in Queensland, Sunshine Coast. So um, if you're not from Australia, we're literally half an hour drive from Australia Zoo, which is the home of the Irwins. Urban oh, family. Oh yeah. Um, so there's my claim to fame. I live near a zoo. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we live on the Sunshine Coast, beautiful place of the world. We're not from the Sunshine Coast, except for my two kids are now that they've been born here. But but I'm from Adelaide, which is in South Australia, and my wife's from Hobart, which is in Tasmania. So colder climates during the winter, and and particularly Adelaide is really hot during the summer. But here on the sunny coast, it's nice subtropical. So and we've been here for oh, five or six years now. Um, so this is our home at the moment and, and, and loving it. But yeah, uh, dad to two, I've got a five and a half year old son, Gus, and a two and a half year old daughter, Pippa. So um, yeah, we've just got like a little nuclear unit here. Um, my parents are back in Adelaide. Rachel's parents are back in, in Tassie and, and we've got a bit of extended family here on the coast. Um, but yeah, but I guess I always think back to when I became a dad and I was on a podcast the other day talking about the birth of Gus and it's funny how when you become a dad and then life happens and you kind of forget about when you first become a dad and you know you, you're just thrown into the moments and you know we're doing school and childcare now but back to when Gus was born and and I remember that first night he was born and my wife had a cesarean and emergency caesar um because Gus got stuck and and then so she was in bed for for five days afterwards um, and I'd never held a baby really yeah. before this moment. So I'm up doing the, the, the nappy changes and, and pacing up and down the hospital ward, trying to get him to sleep in the middle of the night. And, and, and a lot of this, Rachel would show me how to do all this type of stuff, but I had to be really reliant on the nurses because Rachel couldn't get out of bed and, and she was exhausted and all that. But I remember the nurse coming in and showing me how to change Gus's nappy, at, you know, and clean him up and, and, and then swaddle afterwards. And, she showed me and I'm like, yep, yep, I've got this. I'm, I'm his dad. I, I, I've got this. And she walked out the, the door and I just burst out crying because I just, I completely forgot what she told me to do. And I felt really shamed and upset that I, you know, I'm meant to be his dad and I, I, I couldn't even change his nappy. But I, I think I was just being too hard on myself because I never had a baby in my life before. Um, and I needed to get over that shame really quickly because Gus was relying on me to change his nappy you know, to be his dad and, and stuff like that. So, so I, I pressed the button and the nurse came back in. There was no drama of her showing me how to do it again. And off I went. And, and then fast forward a couple of years when we had Pippa, same hospital, um, same situation, but, you know, by now I'm well-versed in the dad and I'm just doing this with my eyes closed and the nurses barely come in the door for the, the, the four or five days that we were in the hospital. So um, I think that moment there just reinforced that, yeah, I've got this as a dad um and we're doing it and yeah it's it's the best thing in the world so um i'm really thankful that you you've got this kind of show as well dave like a dad space um podcast and and, and the site that you've got I've, i joined the facebook group this morning actually so i'm, I'm keen to see some oh of the yeah chat. that's great um, Simon. awesome but there's 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 not a lot out there for dads to tune into and and, and get guidance or get help or whatever. There's a lot for mums and and rightly so that you know. Yep. Oh yeah. But dads kind of we shut up shop and we don't talk about too many too many things. So it's great that you've got this platform and we can talk about being a dad today and and all the other guests that you've had on. I've, I've really enjoyed some of the guests that you've you've got on your show. So so hats off to you for 
putting this together and out there into the universe. That's awesome, Simon. That means so much to me that you would say that a as a dad, b as a podcaster, like that's that means a lot to me. I really appreciate that because the one thing I'm thinking back when I think of my dad journey too, Simon, is when like before I was married, before I met my wife, dated and all that, there was just me, mm. right? I could live yeah. off terrible food and late nights and no sleep. And I, it's me, right? I only have to worry about me. And then yeah. enter a partner. And now I have someone else to think about. I have two schedules now. I have to balance that. And then as soon as that new life comes in your home, mm. everything changes. And yeah. I don't remember there being a lot of resources for me as a dad way back then. I'm a little bit older than you are, but way back then, there was nobody saying, Dave, listen, this is what's going to happen. Here's yeah. some things to think about. Here's some things that I tried that didn't work, or here's some things that worked that you should think about. There was nobody in that space for me. There were yeah. no podcasts at that time in my life. So to have a conversation like this with you today from the other side of the world and you're tomorrow and I'm yesterday to you, <laughs> um, it's kind of surreal, but the fact that we can have this conversation, then that someone can listen to this, maybe they're yeah. going in the hospital this week and they're going to have a new life and they're going to have a big change in their world. What would you say to these, to a guy that's experiencing maybe this, this week, their whole world's yeah. going to be upside down when they, they're going to stand there in the hospital. What would you tell them? I would tell them that it's going to be okay. You know, you'll get through it. And, and, and when you know, we become a dad and we think that we need to get everything perfect, but I, I hear a lot of the time these days that good enough parenting is, is, is right for our kids as well. They, they're resilient. They, they, we're not meant to bounce them, but they do bounce. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you will get through it. Ask as many questions. Don't be shame for, you know, don't feel shame that if you don't get it right the first time um, and then get onto, you know, Get onto the Dad Space Facebook group. Get onto other Facebook groups. You know, start connecting with other dads and and just ask questions. It's 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 okay. We've all been there and and done it, and and we're all still learning as well. Um, and no two kids are the same as well. So I've got two, and and our story with Gus is very different to our story with Pippa. So um, yeah, just take each child as it come. If it's the second or third or fourth child, and and yeah, everything will be okay. Somebody told me to, um, before I had our firstborn, we have three and I have their pictures up on the mantle here beside me because I'm an empty nester now. My kids are all on doing life. It's very yep. strange. I got to tell you, Simon. Um, <laughs> Is that evolved. why you've got like seven podcasts that you're yeah. doing there? <laughs> I have a podcast problem. Thank you, Simon, for bringing that up. Um, yeah, but I have all their stuff here, but I'm not allowed to touch anything because they want their stuff. But so we tell them it's like a museum. They have to pay admission to come in to the house to see their stuff. <laughs> I got to make some money back, right? I got to make this. You do, you do. <laughs> right. So anyway, but somebody told me when my, my, my oldest was born, the moment you have a child, it's like your heart is taken out of you and lives externally from the rest of your life. So like my kids, I have no idea what they're doing today, where they're at. I'll get a text. I'll get a call, whatever. Right but they're living life mm. and they're not under the roof of my house anymore. They're not within five to 10 feet of me. I don't know what, you know, my whole life is different now as an empty nester. Yeah. And I long for the days where my kids are around my feet or playing with my guitar or under my roof. Right. That's that feeling is gone for me. And it's, yeah. it's, it's quite surreal. And there, again, nobody was there to tell me, Dave, your kids are teenagers. You need to plan for this. They're going to leave someday. And part of me is like, yes. But part of me is like, wait a minute, then what? Right? So can you even imagine for your two kids that they're grown up adults and gone? Can you imagine that? I know because it's so far away. And I, I think of a world like, like Gus is five and a half. And, and you know, the, even Pippa, she loves getting on our phone. So I always I remember back to when I was a kid, there was no mobile phones like for us. And there's no internet. Uh, or anything so I, I always wonder what a world would look like in 15 years or so in, or 20 years when when they become adults like yeah what's that world going to look like and be like and and how are we going to interact and and keep connected and 
or are they going to be one of those kids that stay at home until they're 30 or 40 or, or whatever? And um, yeah, I always think forward to that, but I couldn't imagine without the kids there, it's often so quiet, you know, when they're not, when they're at school, for example, it's just so quiet and, and you get those times moments to breathe and, and reflect and catch up on some sleep maybe, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought about the empty nesting component of it. Yeah. Cause you think about your dad life, Simon, you, you spent all this time working, building, supporting, giving your kids whatever they need in life. You're there, you're giving, 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 right? And there's very, very often as a dad, from my perspective, you, you giving sometimes from an empty tank, mm. you know, or you go do something extra to fill up the tank enough to give that piece away again. And you yeah. don't spend a lot of time focused on yourself. So mm-hmm. can you take us down a path tying back into the podcast, into your story for, for men, how important is our mental health and, and creating space for ourselves to f- refill our tanks so that yeah. we're not running on empty all the time? I think that my burnout story is, is probably most applicable for this because it's a recent one. You know, I've lived with mental illness for 30 years and I can talk about growing up with obsessive compulsive disorder and all this type of stuff. But the burnout story is really, I think, crucial because it's recent and it's when I was a dad as well. So 2020, we were in the middle of, I think it was around September, October, I I hit a wall basically. And for anyone who doesn't know what burnout is, burnout is the, the result of prolonged stress on the body and the mind. And it's long, it's like a slow burn. Like it takes a long time to get to a point where you, you basically just stop functioning, you know, um, so leading up into burnout, you know, you're getting, you're stressed all the time. You could be anxious or you could be start getting irritated things. You, you stop seeing the joy and the good in things as well. Um, you know, in a workplace, you might start to feel a bit disjated by the work culture or, or your colleagues or, or things like that. Um, you might feel like everything's helpless or you're hopeless. All these types of emotions come into it. And for me, we had, I started, so I've been working full time in a, in a public service career for 15 or so years um, up until now. So it was probably what, 12 years, a couple of years ago, roughly. And 2018, we, um, we had Gus as well. Um, so I was a new dad. I was started studying a master's of social work as well, part time. So so I'm a new dad full time and a worker full time, student part time, and then um, and then we hit COVID as well. You know, we had COVID at the end of that was 2019 into 2020. Um, so we had lockdown. So in Australia, everyone was locked down into their ha- their homes, or they could only go five or ten kilometres from home to get groceries, but they had to come back home. And we were there for about five or six months on air, day on day, every single day, and. And all these things, and, I, and, and my work was a high KPI environment. So it's kind of like a conveyor belt of work. You know, you do one job, you, you know, press approve on, on, on this, this particular piece of work. The next one would just come in and you just do that over and over again. So it's that high, high pressure, high KPIs. If you're not beating your KPIs, you're getting asked why, all that type of stuff. And so all of this is happening for me. So I feel like I've got five or six different candles that I'm holding and they're all burning at both ends um you know sleep deprivation of being a dad um because we had pippa as well so we had two in two under two under four i think at the time wow. and it got to a point where the stress and and the the brain fog got so much that i just pretty much stopped almost stopped functioning i couldn't think straight i couldn't you know do anything um and i i remember um breaking down on the phone to my boss uh and just crying and, and i say i feel i say i feel burnt out and before that whenever you hear about someone saying burnout you're just like oh yeah whatever you don't you don't want to do any job your work you don't want to you know mm. do your job and, and be that person but when you when you actually experience it yourself burnout is real really detrimental to both your physical health and your mental health so so my mental health was in the can um, and I started developing physical symptoms as well. So I developed this mysterious back pain um, that, that after testing, we couldn't even find out what the cause of the back pain was. I had constant headaches and neck aches and, and back aches and, and yeah, it was just too much. And 
So I ended up needing to take four and a half months off of work. Um, and it was lucky that I had this long career that I had enough uh, sick leave and annual leave to be able to do that without um, having a financial impact on the, on the mortgage and, and, and yeah. stuff like that. So a lot of that four and a half months was looking, um, you know, I went to therapy. I went to a, see a mental health social worker to work through all the, the, the hurt that I was going through and the emotions and, and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of our recovery process was self-care and looking after myself and, you know, rediscovering the things that give me joy. So I mentioned before the, the YouTube music that I was doing yeah. um, and or the, the music that I was putting onto YouTube. And that was a pro that was a creative process that was quite deliberate because when I was creative and I was focused in on, on putting these loop music together, it was taking my brain away from, from thinking about a million different thoughts at once, which often happens um, in burnout, but also because I have obsessive compulsive disorder as well, my brain is constantly working. And it just let me focus on one task. And it was a task that I could start and finish within an hour or two. And I felt like I've accomplished things. And the reason I put it on YouTube was because of that accomplishment. It was I've done this task and it felt good to put something out in the world that hopefully someone listens to. I used to listen to it a lot um, on repeat just because I enjoyed the music, but it just felt good again. And so doing lots of little things like that, I used to spend a lot of time in the garden. You know, I'm not a huge gardener, but I like getting out there and just being, and this is where the mindfulness and mindful men comes from, just being mindful and, mm. and grounded in, in being in the garden. So I love mowing my lawn and I love the smell that comes from that on the freshly cut grass. So I'd mow the lawn and I just feel good about the, the smells that were coming from that and, and maybe doing the weeding. No one likes weeding their garden, but, you know, getting out yeah. there and seeing yeah. the end product of your weeding and yeah. seeing it all yeah. looking nicely, that was a good feeling. And doing a lot of walking and mindful, mindful walking. So I'd go for a walk around my local area. We've got a lake there that we can go around. And if I'm feeling like I wasn't present on the walk, I wasn't enjoying the walk, I was thinking about too many things. I'd, I'd brush past and, and grab leaves or, or whatever off a tree and just hold them in my hand and crunch them in my hand just to get to ground me back in that moment and feel the different textures and the sounds of that. And doing lots of these little things and it started to fill my cup again. And, you know, I wasn't thinking about work because I was off of work. I was focused on my recovery and focused on self-care and, and exercising again. I was going for little jogs or, or, mm. or whatever. And over that four month period, I was able to start to feel good about myself again. And I guess this is where I started my Mindful Men Instagram page as well. This is where it all began was starting to tell the story about burnout and men's mental health more broadly so that other guys out there could go, oh, maybe this is happening to me and I need to do something about it. Or maybe this has happened to my partner, my wife, and maybe I need to help her through through that kind of healing process as well um, because you are a team in, in, a, in a family environment it is yeah. you know you can't one, one person can't do it all so if you're both doing it then that certainly helps the family unit so so yeah it was just around self-care and I still do all these things today I'm, I'm really mindful if I'm getting stressed or anxious or, or worried I, the first thing I now ask myself is where's my self-care at what's making me feel good am I being creative should I jump on the guitar Mm -hmm. um and play something or should i go and mow the lawn do i need to go do we do some exercise am i drinking too much beer am i eating the wrong foods am i not going to bed early enough very basic stuff but when you put it all together and these are the things that fill out fill our cups on a daily basis and they're easy to do that they're, they're free in most cases you don't have to have memberships to gyms or whatever if if you can't afford that um but yeah, so I've been on this journey and then I probably experienced burnout a second time more recently, um, a few months back as well. I kind of hit that wall again where I, where I was getting frustrated. But I think this time I was more attuned in, I was more tuned into it. I could see the signs and symptoms and I could pull back quicker and I, I could stop myself before I hit that real big wall. And we, as, as a result of the second time, I made some really big decisions to end up resigning from my career of 15 years in the public service to to actually follow my dreams and now I'm setting up a men's mental health service so it's dedicated to men and boys 
Um, women can, can, can give me a call and, and get support from me as well, but it is certainly focused on men to try and open up and, and get them on their healing journeys as well. So, so yeah, in a nutshell, that's what I've been doing and, and focusing on and, and, and it all comes from that burnout story. I think a lot of it did anyway, but there's a whole back history of OCD and depression and anxiety as well. That's gone over 30 years. I love, I love how you're addressing it and helping men through that and being a resource for people. Um, so we're going to close off in a minute. So can you share contact information as well for people that are listening? Yeah. So I've just got the website up and running now. So it's www.mindful-men.com.au. Um, so the therapy component is for Australian based men yep. and boys and women. Um, but I've also got the podcast and it's got the links to the, my social media, which which reaches out to the world and, and, and tries to help inspire boys and men and women across the globe. So, so yeah, that's the, they're the best places to get, get in contact. It's amazing. So before we close off, Simon, any, any words of advice for people on the edge or living with burnout right now? What can we do right now today to take a step yep. forward? Um, the first one is what, check out your self-care. Yep. Have you been for a walk today? Have you got some vitamin D? Are you eating right? put down the beer, you know, I love beer, but put it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you sleeping? Like just check in yourself what's happening around you. Second one is be okay with talking to someone, you know, it's your partner, your friend, a colleague at work or your GP. A GP is a great place because it's private, it's confidential and they can connect you with, you know, psychologists, counselors, whoever around the world um or around your local area sorry um and and just start talking and, and opening up and it's it's okay to be not okay i love it and i see that in your in your stuff on your website and everything i'm glad you put that in there simon it's so good to have you on the podcast um i would love if you're okay in the future to have you back again and yes. to continue the com continue the conversation again thank you for being part of dad space uh on the facebook group and the podcast and everyone go over to the mindful men podcast Take a listen, follow, rate, review, do all the things, help Simon out with his podcast. And I love that you're giving Simon. It's an, it's inspirational to me and to those that are listening. I thank you for doing it. I love the podcast. I really enjoy what you're doing. So thank you for that. Dave, thanks so much for having me on. And I'd, um, I'm an open book, so I'm open, happy to come on and talk about absolutely anything. And if there's any anybody listening out there today who wants to come on the Mindful Men podcast, I love hearing from people across the globe. And if they want to share their story, um, yeah, touch base with me through the, through the website or through the socials. So Go check it out. There's your invitation. You want to get on a great podcast. Simon's right here for you. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. Thanks for listening to Dad Space today. Go check us out on all of our social media, YouTube, all that great stuff. You can find us as Dad Space Podcast. Real simple. Dad Space Podcast, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, even YouTube. Email us, dadspacepodcast at gmail.com. We're always looking for great guests to come on the podcast. If you have any feedback for us, let us know here at Dad Space. Looking forward to connecting with you on the next episode right here of Dad Space. Follow us on your podcast app for more. Cheers. To you, Dad. Thank you.